The men were building a drainage tunnel about 30 yards below ground and 400 yards from the shaft when they were overcome by gas thought to have been produced by yesterday's blasting operations. Firemen wore breathing masks for protection against the fumes and had to work on a steep and slippery surface as well as being hindered by a derailed train. The casualties, some unconscious, included a director of the tunnelling contractors and two ambulance men who'd arrived first and gone down the shaft without oxygen. Amongst those first down was a surface engineer. The uh, boss of the operation went in just to check to see if they're all right, which is a normal procedure underground. Came straight back down when he saw they had collapsed and, all, and alerted everyone else and raised the alarm. Uh, and what did you personally do? Oh, I went in there and did what I could, as, as anyone else underground would do. And what were you able to do? Well, try and get some people uh, out, get, get some air moving. Um, and I had, well, we had to get, get the people out. The, and unfortunately, the, it's an unusual situation underground, and uh, the fire brigade did a, a sterling job, as did the ambulance. Then when we got there, there was bodies laying all over the place. There was uh, two of the chaps who went down to rescue the miners. There was also an ambulance man who passed out and um, we removed these to the airline which was broke at the side of the tunnel and then we went on further up the tunnel looking for two others that were reported at the rear of the tunnel. The job was very difficult because the furthermost casualty was about a half a mile in underground. Between him and the way out there was a lots of these mine railway carriages which were derailed and he was a big lad and they had to manhandle him over all of these carriages and this is why the men were working so hard and therefore using up their breathing apparatus cylinders so we were changing men over roughly every half an hour just to keep the continuity going all the casualties were taken to oakhampton hospital suffering from the effects of breathing in carbon monoxide the symptoms include low blood pressure and shaking They've been kept in overnight for observation and are described as stable. Now the Mines and Quarries Inspectorate have begun an inquiry into what caused the build-up of gas. Tunnel about 120 feet below the quarry floor and 1,000 feet from this entrance shaft. At about 9 o'clock they were found collapsed and poisoned by gases. Two members of the first ambulance crew on the scene bravely ventured into the tunnel though they had no special breathing equipment. They too were overcome, and a third ambulance man was affected by fumes, though he was only standing on the surface. The incident became even more serious as other miners, determined to rescue their colleagues, were in turn overcome. Twenty-five firemen were soon on the scene with the proper breathing apparatus, but as they began bringing out the casualties, they were using up their oxygen so far...